Yaakov Avinu was the biggest mechanic in Klal Yisrael. In fact, he was the only mechanic in Klal Yisrael. He had 12 kids. You know, that's not easy to raise 12 kids. Especially so many different personalities. Each one had a different sign, a different personality. All different types of stuff going on at home. But imagine having some of you have 12 kids at home. It's not easy. It's like that famous story of the mechanic that he came on a snow day. There was six feet of snow. He comes to school to teach. The Rebbe, unbelievable. And the Manal tells him, why did you come? Only six kids showed up today. He said, yeah, at home I have nine. <laughs> right, so Yaakov Avinu has 12, 12 guys at home, 12 chavra. And he knew, he should have known, the fundamental principle of parenting, which is, don't make the other kids jealous. So why did he go ahead and take the Ksainis Pasim and give it bedafka to... <laughs> Yosef, didn't he know that he's going to trigger jealousy? That's taka what happened. They got jealous and they almost killed him. Why didn't he know that? Pash the zach, the first thing, ABCs of parenting, don't show favoritism. Don't give one kid, right? Especially, it wasn't even the Bukhar. You could take, the, take number 11 and boom, you get this, this amazing thing. Sadiq Sam Seifer, the Yaakov Avinu saw that this kid out of all my kids is going to have challenges that none of my other kids are going to have. This kid is going to go through darkness and confusion and pain that none of my other kids are going to go through. This kid is going to have challenges. The other, the other, the other Shvatim, they didn't have these challenges. What Yosef HaTzadik went to, went through over there in Mitzrayim and being in jail and being ripped away from his family and being thrown in a bar by his brothers and, and feeling like my whole, my whole life, everybody turned against me. I'm all alone in a jail. <laughs> And, and uh, Poitifa wanted to have him as his uh, boyfriend, and his wife wanted to have him as a boyfriend. I mean, it was, it was horrible, what he, the Nisiyanis that he went through. So the Chassam Seifer says, Yaakov Avinu saw this kid is going to go through horrible Nisiyanis that none of my other kids are going to go through. And in order for him to survive, he needs to know, my Tati loves me more than anyone else in the entire world. He took the chance with the jealousy because this was CPR. This was a life, a rope to save him. Think about your kids. The other kids are in the mainstream. The other kids never are going to have the nesioinus that this kid, this kid in pain who's not in yeshiva and not from, and disconnected from society, so much pain and so much of what we deal with is the symptoms of the pain. <coughs> Because they're in pain, therefore they do drugs. Because they're in pain, therefore they numb themselves and all these other, and that's our problem. But that's not their problem. They had a problem way before all of these problems. Oy vey, she's walking out in a miniskirt. That's not her problem. Oy vey, they're doing drugs. Drugs are not their problem. Drugs is their solution to try to get rid of some of the pain in their brain. Like so many, of, so many kids have told their parents, I want to die. I can't exist. And even those who don't have that level of pain, they're so lost. So forget about how they got there. Let's say there's no pain, no trauma, no abuse, and a kid is off the derech, and he drops out of school. So how could you compare his journey to, to Eilam Haba compared to all the other kids that are in a society, in a school system, in a shul, in a system where you don't have to decide every day, what am I going to do? I'm from, I put on tefillin, you know, you're set. How can you compare a kid out of the system and off the derech, the nesiyayness of that child, they have more nesiyayness in any hour of any day more than any normal healthy kid in the system is ever going to have in their whole life. This kid is going to have more challenges than any other kid. So you have to risk the jealousy, although we work with the other kids that they shouldn't be jealous because they should understand this. This kid needs to know, my tati, my mommy love me more than all all the other kids in the family. I was in Alpine, I always tell the story. I was upstate a few years ago in the winter, and a chassid shayid, a satmar chassid, came over to me, and he said, oh, you're Avi Fishoff, I saw some of your videos, I have a story for you. And he told me this story that I love to repeat, it's unbelievable. He was approximately 65 years old. He tells me 50 years ago, I had an older brother. When I was 15, I had an older brother, 20, 22, and this older brother was off the derech completely, completely. He was in the police force. He had an Italian shiksa girlfriend. He was mamish completely off the derech. And my father went to Divrei Yoel Schis Yugen to ask him advice. What do I do? And he took me along. So he had a schia at 15 years old. He was brought in. This was his chinuch. He was brought in to the, to the Rebbe Schis to find out 
What should parents do? Parents are so confused. Throw them out, cut them off. What should we do? And he said, my, my father came in with me, he asked him the question, he described the situation, tears in his eyes, a broken heart, a broken hearted father. You're talking about the Divri Yael that those of us who remember him, it was fire. It was fire, considered the biggest kanoi, right? And he told him, Medafim Libum, you have to love him, shower him with love, never disconnect from him. And he just gave him these words over and over again. You got to stay connected and you got to love him and he should know that you love him. He said, when my father left the office, everything changed. The whole attitude changed. They showered him with love. It's so hard. Here he is, police officer, with all the other stuff, showered him with love. He said, Ad kach, that this is 50 years ago, my brother wanted to buy a tractor trailer truck, right? That's not a Jewish vehicle. We only go up to minivan. The tractor trailer truck is not a Jewish vehicle. And he wanted to travel cross country and do deliveries. You can imagine along the way there's no minyanim. And you can imagine what else goes on with that, with that kind of lifestyle. My father didn't have the money. He borrowed $5,000 cash to put it into my brother's hand. Tati's paying for your truck. How much is that today? 50 grand? It's a lot of money, $5,000, 50 years ago. Why? I want you to know, my son in the truck, that you're my son in the truck. You need to know, you have a tati, you have a mommy. Even though we're it's different than you, we're your tati, we're your mommy, we are providing for you. What's the end of the story? Baruch Hashem, the kid came back, and he became not only back, not only Shai Matar Mitzvah, Chasidish, Satmer, he told me now at this point, he's already 70s, and he's already a Zayda, and he has a full family of Chasidish kids in Einiglach. Then he tells me, a year and a half ago, my father got sick. So we have a big family. When a Satmar guy tells you it's a big family, it's a big family. And everybody was helping to take care of my father. But you know, Shabbos to be in a hospital is not so geschmack. He said, I'll do it. Yontif in a hospital, two days, not geschmack, I'll do it. A three-day Yontif, nobody wants to be in a hospital. He said, I'll do it. He was there day and night by my father. Ahatam badint. He served him, he changed him. He, he was there for him, mamish like a ben yochid. He was there for my father, unbelievable. And my sister chaperoned him. Ah, you're being nice to Tati because you feel bad for all the agma snappish that you gave him when you were 50 years ago? He says, guilt? Nah. I'm taking care of Tati because I know that he loves me more than all of you put together. <laughs> and the end of the story was, he tells me, my father died. And they were in the year at that time. He said, I'm in the year for my father. And a few days before my father died, Be'erach, a week, he stopped talking. He had no kayak to talk. He didn't say anything to anybody besides this brother. When my brother would come, he would muster up the energy to say a few words to this brother. Because you know what? He loved him more than all of us put together. And that love happened because the father realized this kid has nesiyayness that none of my other kids are going to have. And I have to be there for this kid. And have, as Rev. Dessler famously says, have giving creates love. The shayrish of ahava is have. So when you give and you give, it creates love. And because love is the only medicine that you have, as Rav Gershon Edelstein said so clearly, Rosh Hashiva of Panevish Lita, zuhi hatrufa hayechida. When does someone tell you that there's a problem and this is the only medicine? Zuhi hatrufa hayechida. Who says that? Maybe this way, and there's, there's other methods. He tells you he's made, he's a, he's a direct link to the Chazanish. Zuhi hatrufa hayechida. The only medicine. Nobody else found anything else. The Baal Shem Tov only came up with one medicine, Lehoi Vaisam B'yaisa, extra super duper love. The Chazanish only came up with one medicine, Yenasu L'mashcham Ba Vaisai Sahava, Veloi L'tchai Khalila, which is what you're doing. Pulling them emotionally with your love, which means it's very hard to move somebody just with love. That's a lot of love. Veloi L'tchai Khalila, and you're also careful not to reject them, not a negative word, nothing that will be perceived as rejection. Remember, rejection is in the heart of the beholder. When you look at your kid like that, you realize, this kid, Nebuch, however they got here, what nesiyayness they have, we're going to go ahead and show this kid, I love you more than anybody and everything. What an amazing lesson. But here's what makes me sad. You would do this for your other kids also. 
you would do this for, for any of your kids that are sick or disturbed in any way. Baharaya, you're doing it, right? So why don't the healthy kids get that feeling? Why only the one who goes off the derech and then you happen to go to Avi and you do twisted parenting? And this is true, by the way. I'm telling you, they come back, they will serve you forever. Yes, the parents, Baruch Hashem, over 95 already, Shem Torah Mitzvahs, they will serve you forever, these kids, because they know you were there for me when nobody else was there for me. What about the healthy kids? I mean, you can turn your kids into your slaves. Remember, you have to be nice to them. They're going to be deciding which nursing home you go to. And you'll see at the end, you're going to say, who, extra nurses, 24-hour nurses, who has the money for this? It's going to be the kip. So why not shower the healthy kids in a healthy way? Why do we have parents that don't hug their kids, but the, okay, the off the derech one, Avi says you have to hug. Ay, nebuch. Hug the healthy ones. Give them that vitamin, give them the strength, give them compliments. Shower them with love. It's not dangerous, it's so, so effective. It's so effective. I'll say it again, what Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein said. In our day, when there are so many challenges, nesiyonis, that are pulling kids away from the Kaisle Beis HaMedrash, he's talking about healthy from kids. The derech hayayilu b'yoyser, the best way to save and fortify these kids is kvalim shel ahava, cables of love. Again, love. Somehow love became a dirty four-letter American word. It's not. It's tiredik. Why did we forget showering kids with compliments, hugging kids, benching them? Please, I'm begging you, Friday night, I don't care if it's not your minug, now it's your minug. You bench every kid and then you hug them and then you kiss them. If you have a shayla, which I can't understand, ask your Rav. Avram hugged and kissed Yitzchak. Yitzchak did to Yaakov. They were pretty from. Hug them and kiss them. It wasn't my minag either. Where I come from, also not. I realized 20 years ago, kids, kids need this today. It's free. You're going to save money from therapy later. Give them love and love and love. Every kid. The kip is a different story. If he'll let you, sure, if he's there. They love hugs. And you, bet, you put your hands on their head if they let you, and you say, I hope that you'll be happy. Give me a hug. I have kips by my table all the time. I say, free bracha. Some of them respond, some of them not. Some of them let me put their heads on. Some of them I do Bluetooth. <laughs> I do wireless. I say, Phew. Hashem should give you happiness. That bracha everybody likes. Everybody likes. I had it home sweet home. Sometimes I had Rabbanim come, which was very dangerous. I also at home kids, in order to get in, they didn't, you know, part of it, if you liked Rabbanim, we didn't accept you. These were kids that had a lot of problems. But I knew when and where. I had, had some good Rabbanim. Rabbi Yaman Eisenberger came and spoke to them. I have a beautiful picture. They were like this. They loved it, right? Rabbi Ram Shor came. It was beautiful. It was, it was really good. They speak so nicely to these kids. So at the end, there was one Rav that was there, and I said, okay, let's all get a bracha. Everybody ran out. Out, Bye. So one guy, he went over, he said, I'll take a bracha. So he took his hand, and the Rav said to him, Hashem should, should help you that you should be really, really happy. All the other kids heard, they came right back, right back in, and they said, oh, I want a bracha, I want a bracha. They want to be happy. Rich. Hashem should help you, you should be rich. Boom. Rich, happy, you should have a fun life. That's stuff that everybody likes. So it depends, yesh yes. you have to know your kip, know thy kip. And remember, ain't daima kip la kip. Each one's different. Stage is different. Some of them are allergic to touch. You have to, do, you have to figure out how to do it. But your other kids, bench them, tell them from now on, we have a new minag. Tati is gonna bench everybody and then mommy gives a hug and a kiss. And then hopefully all of them one day will say, I'll take the three day uh, you know, yontif to visit in the hospital. <laughs> You'll create a whole, a whole people, avodim. My father, after the Holocaust, he didn't have any family, so Reb Shmuel David Walken and his wife walked my father down the aisle. And he was a very chosh of a big tzaddik. He was born in Raden, by the Chavetz Chaim. And he said, when I grew up, I used to serve my father. You know, five, six, seven, eight years old, I was a slave. You know, you polish his shoes and, you know, serve. But I, I hated it, but I knew one day I'm going to have kids, and they're going to be a slave to me. And then I came to America, and I'm a slave to them. <laughs> you want your kids to have respect for you. You want your kids to honor you and to be there for you. Think about it. Have creates a hava. Give to them and shower them. Don't, don't just do this on the kip, because you're going to look back in 10 years from now and say, why do I have a better relationship with my kip than my kids? We have a family that was here. From 13 to 15 years old, this girl 
ran out of the house, did everything wrong, and they were chasing her. And finally, at 15 years old, they threw her out of the house. And then the Belzer Rebbe sent them to me. And um, Baruch Hashem, it was a short journey, three years, from June to June, from 15 years old to 18 years old, till she got married, Kedas Moshe of Yisrael, and Er a girl, and she had Baruch Hashem, two kids since then. And the parents told me, we got back from vacation, it was a, a late flight, we came home, and on the refrigerator is a note from her, inside, in case you were hungry, I made supper for you. And they said, none of our other kids thought about us, that maybe we'll be hungry. Uber Eats. This kid, out of all the kids, she's thinking about us. Why? Because you invested so much. So while you attack are busy, and you're investing, mamish, it's harder to raise one kid than a dozen regular healthy kids. Costs more money, time, effort, energy, it's true. But also, work on the other kids to develop strong bonds and connections with them. And as a Hashem, you'll have a, a whole army there to take care of you. And remember what I always say, be nice to your kids, because if everything goes according to plan, they're the ones speaking at your funeral. So give them a good speech.